Welcome back to Beyond the Keys of Pat Lots Podcast. As always, Chris Lots. Today, another special guest here with Dom Comer, um, OP of KW Living. And OP stands for? Operating Principal. And you and that operating principal owns a market center. That's correct. A lot of acronyms at KW. Yeah. I'm still trying to kind of uh, uh, figure it all out, but we're at least tracking on those two terms. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for coming in, man. Uh, it's great to be here. We we were just talking about, and I think that, again, this is something that not many people are talking about for personal sacrifice. You see a lot of this. <clears throat> hey, at an inspection today, third showing down. But what's behind the camera when people aren't looking? And I think that that needs to be a conversation because, one, we're starting to change the conversation Back in 2020 and 2021, a lot of people thought selling a house is easy. Mm. How long have you been in real estate? Uh, this year is going to be 10 years in November. So selling a house is not easy. No. It's easy when you've done it for so many years and you've done it so many times. Running a market center is not easy. No. Uh, no. And and people, I think people, that that's the value that I think people are going to take away from this podcast is, is like, you know, well, and I don't want to say life's hard. We all have problems. We all have these things that we're working through and um, shedding some light on that mm -hmm. gives better perspective for the people that are looking to do those same things. One, be a real estate agent, build from that foundation, become a broker, maybe buy a market center, something like that. Absolutely. So let's jump back to what we were talking about. You're up in the morning at what time? 4.45. 4.45. From 4.45, what's that first three hours look like? So for 4.45 to 7.45, what's Dom doing? Uh, first things first, I wake up every day. I pour one pot of coffee or one cup of coffee and my Keurig. I guzzle as much water as I can while my coffee is being made. I grab my journal and my Bible and whatever other book I'm reading. First, I'll start with the Bible, and I will pick up wherever I left off. I just read it cover to cover. I have no rhyme or reason to it, and I'll try to read a couple of pages of that. Then I move on to reading one chapter of Proverbs in the Bible every single day. Uh, and I do that because I read in another book, uh, and I can't even remember the name of the book. It could have been uh, The Richest Man Who Ever Lived or something like that. Yeah. And it was talking about King Solomon in the Bible. And he wrote the book of Proverbs, which is all just wisdom for every single day. And they said in this book that it's proven that if you read one chapter of Proverbs every day of the month, and there's 30, 30 chapters of Proverbs, mm -hmm. for two years you'll be wealthy, and in five years you'll be rich. And I've been reading that for now seven or eight years. And, well, I don't know what your bank account looks like, but would you think, I mean, that, I, I would think that's true. It is true. Ba based on that, that evidence. And maybe it's a manifestation thing. Maybe it's just a, a mindset thing. And that's a big thing that I've been transitioning to is just mental toughness and mindset stuff. Yeah. And I don't normally swear on this, but, um, you know, the, the, the theme of Pallet's real estate group has just been get your mind right. Yeah. And you know, I think too many people are focused on, you know, what's the budget? Uh, what's the book for, for finances? Nah, get your mind right. Yeah. If you get your mind right, it doesn't matter. And you said it, you go waking up in the morning, setting this foundation. It doesn't just translate to the real estate business. It translates to whatever the heck you want to do. Oh. Maybe it's having a, a well-rounded blessed family, which you do. Yes. Maybe it's, you know, being the president of the United States, maybe it's whatever it is, just being a mechanic, um, yep. that bleeds into all aspects of your life. Absolutely. And normally when I say, get your mind right, uh, the, at least the people in my sphere, their response is, my mind's right. Yeah. If you, if you think your mind's right, then obviously your mind's not right. So, cause I mean, I think your mind, your, your approach or your response might be, you're right. How, what are you? What are your thoughts, Chris? Where I, I can build from that stuff, and and that's my perspective, at least from you mm -hmm. and all the other people at KW Living. It's 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 about continuously building a better business that bleeds into that life. And it starts with the foundation of your day. Mm -hmm. And I tell my agents this all the time. I mean, it's completely changed my life. 
it, it goes on to, I, I, after I read the Bible, I will pick up whatever other book that I'm reading. It could be about real estate. It could be about uh, wealth building. It could be just, it could be a fictional story about something great, mm-hmm. right? Like the alchemist. Um, from there, I go on to journaling. Every day, I'll write down 10 things that I'm grateful for. And I'll write down some affirmations of who I, I want to become. And I'll just write it down in real time and, and write that I'm there so I can train my subconscious mind. Yeah. Get your mind right. Yeah. And then I'll go downstairs and exercise. And by that time, when I'm done, um, I typically eat breakfast with the kids and see them off to school and get to come to work. I, I've never for a second ever thought that your mind wasn't right. But two, like that's full circle is, uh, well, practice what you preach. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I always say like, I'm a better coach than I am player sometimes, which like, you know, we might remind ourselves, we as in people that are not necessarily doing those consistent foundational things. Um, but uh, you practice what you preach. Mm-hmm. You do before you tell. And it definitely shows. Uh, when did you buy the, uh, the market center? 2018 2018 so that was uh close going on six years maybe well it's it was actually five i closed down the brokerage five years to the date of getting my real estate license gotcha um and that's one thing that i was just gonna say is one you were reading proverbs uh way before you bought the market center well two years before the market center Mm -hmm. and what was what was the thing that was told if you read proverbs every single day of the week for two Two years, years You'll be mic drop. You'll be wealthy. Yeah, mic drop. We're done. Podcast over. The biggest takeaway is go read Proverbs. Yeah, every single it's day, one wisdom. chapter, one chapter a day. Um, do you talk to the agents about that specifically? Yes. How many people? There's how many agents are at Kitty Bliven right now? Two hundred plus. Somewhere. No, it's we're we're at 184. 184. Today. Yeah. How many? And it's not about you know who's doing it, who's not doing yeah. it. Um, over your five years of owning that market center, I'm sure you, you're very authentic. I'm sure you've told that story many, many times. Mm-hmm. How many people have you seen kind of implement the, into that their uh, daily foundation? Uh, I wish I could say more. Yeah. Uh, we, I, I wish say, we could I would say, say more. I would say there's probably less than 1% that mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. Well, sh- shoot, you know, let's relate that to the world. Yeah. You know, everyone wants to buy rental properties. Yeah. Everyone wants to invest in the stock market. Everyone wants to, you know, go see Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. How many people actually go do those things? Probably 1%. And actually, I saw a stat recently about, you know, rental property specifically. If you own one, I'm pretty sure the average landlord that owns rental properties owns like 1.25 units. Wow. So if you own two units, you are above average. Yeah. And one's a great, one's a great place to start. Two can change your life. And I think more people need to even hear that as well. It's like people think you need to own 100 units, 100 doors. I know. Um, it's specifically to real estate or at least investing in real estate. But full circle, it comes back to action. Yes. Action. And hmm. a- agents aside, industries aside, even me, like I'm a product of it as well. It's I go to this time. I just went to Tom Ferry. I don't know if you saw that. Mm-hmm. Um, we just joined Tom Ferry probably three months ago. And the first hour I was there, I was fired up. Fired up up and i wish that we joined tom ferry about 10 years ago have you ever met him not in person no um great energy great energy um we're actually going down to dallas to so that was elite retreat okay 2000 agents maybe a little bit less maybe 1800 um so bigger room not as big as a family reunion that is like 18,000, right Yeah, yeah um so elite retreat and then they put on sale at last day they put on like a call to action hey you know this is uh this is what we're offering and you guys buy it um phil jones i believe his name is public speaker great guy i think his name is phil jones i'll circle back on that but mm-hmm. his keynote speak his uh, keynote presentation again fired me up the question he asks and it's not about the questions but it's i guess how you formulate the questions to one poll or push people away yeah and then tom ferry so Mm -hmm. they're offering two three days in dallas 500 people um 2500 bucks a ticket and that was 2000 people trying to buy tickets in five seconds i texted my wife and i said hey like no one's gonna buy it here because the internet the cell service and she ended up being able to get two tickets for me and pat and i think that's gonna be a phenomenal opportunity but back to action yeah how many yeah. people see those call to actions or those opportunities and actually take them? 
one or less those percent. So I hate to say it's probably a uh, a nature of the beast when it comes to statistics. Mm -hmm. um, but why do you think that is, though? I, I have an idea of why do you think that is. Why do you think people are not taking that action in their life? Because I think they they believe that it's harder than what it is, right? I I love, I have a passion for coaching agents. I have a passion for helping people change their lives the same way that I changed my life and beyond, right? If I were to sit down with a hundred people and say one thing that could change your life and it'll only take you maybe two to five minutes a day, you just have to do it every day. Mm -hmm. Just one thing. And I said, and I challenged them to do it for 90 days straight. I can't even tell you that one of a hundred will come back in 90 days and say, you know what? I did that every day for 90 days. And I don't know if you have that one thing, but what's that one thing that you think is that, uh, like, what's that one thing that you're pushing people to do for 90 days? The one, does it matter? Yeah. Yeah. What oh, it? it does matter. What is it? Write down your goal. Okay. Every day. Affirmation. Write, write right? Down, write, write it down. Yes. I don't. Like typing it on a computer is not the same, mm -hmm. right? Typing it into your phone and your notes is not the same. No. But taking out a journal and a pen and writing down a One goal, sentence. right? Yes. I will achieve $10 million in sales by December 31st of 2023. How long will that take? How, how long did it take to say? I mean, Th three seconds. Okay. How long would it take to write? Five seconds, seven, six seconds, whatever it looks One like. One time a day. You write that down for 365 days. If you're not way closer to selling $10 million in real estate by the end of the year, I mean, it's impossible that you wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. That's one thing. Yeah. Um, it goes back to the, that original statement. Like, it, it's, it's, a, it's not about writing anything. It's not about the journal. What is it about? It's getting your mind right. Yeah. And I think that, truly believe... People always ask us, like, what's the difference of the Pat Lots Real Estate Group when it when it comes to, I guess, like our volume, our success. And, and I think we sold like 88 units last year. We did a record year for me and Pat, uh, 33 million. Last year we did 28 something. This year we did 33. What's the difference? Our minds, our mind is as right as possible for the success. Yeah. And we kind of joke. We always think that we're operating at 50 percent. So if we were just 10 percent extra, you don't have to be 100 percent. You don't have to do anything crazy. It's reminding your your mind, training your brain of what the goal is or what what the finish line is. And then too, I think that it uh, maybe maybe not an aspect of those first ninety days, but too many people fall in love with the destination. Mm. We fall in love with the journey. Yes. And I, I think that's like you're, you you kind of lit up. I think that's the definition of you. There's I, correct me if I'm wrong. You have goals. You sure. have you have finish lines, but you love this. I never reach them, like I I don't ever want to reach them. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in the past, yes, I can say that I've written down goals of things that I've wanted, and they were time stamped that of when that I, when I wanted them by, and I've achieved them. And guess what I felt after that? Lost, right? Until I set the new goal. So now I set goals so big that. I may never achieve them, but I promise you, I will get better every single day along the way and my life will get better because I, I do believe, and it's not even material anymore. If I can just help enough other people get what they want, yeah. I can have anything in the world I want. I can live the life that I want. Even, even what we were just talking about, like, you know, 50% capacity or 60% uh, percent capacity, you know, if your goal is 400 agents, whatever the goal is, yeah. 400 agents, you know, 50 million in volume. If you're doing 25 or you get 200, <laughs> that's a damn good year. Yeah. Like, hell that's yes. Right. And I think too many people, to your point, focus on that destination and it's, it's live or die. It's, it's fail or success. Mm -hmm. And back to your, your journal, you're talking about your goals, um, gratitude, mm -hmm. anything else that you're putting in the journal? I, my prayers, your prayers. Yeah. Yep. And, and maybe I, just things to focus in yeah. on, but it, but it could be, it could be a struggle that I'm going through in life that I just want to write down. I mean, honest to God, I want my journals to sit in my house for the rest of my life and one day when I'm gone my my family can go back and read through the stories that I write wow. I write down sometimes I write down my journey of life starting at childhood and I go back and I I, I, I live in it again so I can f 
pull out of it some of the lessons that I learned so that I can help others along the way. Yeah. And, 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 and to that point, you know, I think people fail on reflection, um, positively or negatively. Yeah. And, and I think for us specifically is we're not necessarily focusing back on like the, uh, the positivity. 2022 ends, you know, and, and we had, uh, maybe I had a goal, you know, I don't necessarily, I couldn't tell you a metric goal for, for sales volume, but maybe it was, ah, sh one more. I just wish it was one more. Why am I focusing on that versus focusing on the, you know, the 42 that we did sell on the buy side or the, the 45 we sold on the, the sell side? Like that's an accomplishment. Yeah. So to that point is, well, one, if you're doing one thing for the next 90 days to change your mindset, write down that one goal, period. Start with that. Yeah. Next 90 days, maybe it's that gratitude. Yeah. Next 90 days, maybe it's, you know, the prayers and the, uh, um, the focus is for, you know, what you're looking for for the next quarter, so on and so forth. Gratitude's the easiest thing to start with. When easiest I try thing. to give people something to start with, because I'll say, start journaling, right? And that's too too vague. They'll say, I don't know what to write. Okay, well, think of five things every morning. is first thing when you wake up that you're grateful for. I assure you that as you're writing out that gratitude, other thoughts will come to your mind. And write them out, right? Just let it flow for a little while. There's no time limit to how long or how short that I, I journal. Mm -hmm. I could be having a morning that I write down, you know, my five or 10 things that I'm grateful for and a goal for the day. And I close my journal, close my book. Yeah. But then there's days that I could spend 45 minutes or an hour just writing. Um, I, I'm more of like a, and this is why I wake up so early so I can get all of these things done, you know, before anybody else is even awake. Mm -hmm. I just told at my team meeting the other day on Tuesday, something that came back up that kind of formulated this, this muscle in my life to, to build my mindset. And that was that if you spend one hour a day working on building your craft, whether it's real estate or being a school teacher or whatever, right? But if you spend one hour a day building your craft every single day, focused just on that, in five years, you'll be an expert in your field, right? An expert. How many agents, uh, how many real estate agents in our local board of realtors would you say are experts? What percent? I hope, don't, I, I hope too many people don't look at this, but I think <laughs> it's less than 1%. It's, it's, it's very, very low. No, it's, it's not I, a it's, lot. It's, it's, it's maybe 5%, yeah. right? You're probably closer Being, than I am. <laughs> right? But it, it's true. That are actual experts. experts. Now, there are a lot of good agents out there. There's a lot of agents that can help a lot of people get through a transaction. But an expert, in my mind, is somebody who can can navigate rough waters, you know, or if, or if just a if a wrench gets thrown into a deal, being able to take care of that and take care of their clients along the way and do it at a very high level, being able to net a seller more money, being able to get a buyer a better deal on a house, all of those things, right? Yeah. That requires you to be an expert. Now, the other the other side to it is, if this, this is also an Earl Nightingale quote from the 30s, that if you wake up one hour earlier every day, you gain six and a half, 40 hours a week, a year. If you use that one hour, right? You are six and a half, 40 hour weeks ahead of the person sitting next to you that's not doing that. Yeah. That's how I grew my business in my mentality to be able to go from being realtor on October 31st, 2013 to owner of the company, October 31st, 2018. Mm -hmm. And back to your original point, people overvalue the work that needs to be put in to get to that point in time. No, no, yeah. no, Dom, that's going to take me 50 years. No, 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 Dom, you're wrong. That's going to take me 70 years. I'm never going to be able to do that. Well, those are limiting beliefs mm -hmm. that you're imposing on yourselves because that's not true because look at what I have done. And it started with one hour a day. Yeah. Write down your goal. Be grateful for something. And I think the gratitude, I wanted to go back to the gratitude. It's not necessarily, it doesn't really matter what it is. No. It's about reminding yourself of what you're working for. And I'm assuming your gratitude is more or less your family, your opportunities, your team. Mm -hmm. My faith. And, your faith. And, and those are just the foundational pieces of what your gratitude might believe into. Obviously, your relationship with your wife, your kids, individually, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it's what am I fighting for? And I, it was either Ed Milet or Gary V. And they said every morning they sit there and think about the most traumatic thing possible you know, losing your wife. Mm -hmm. 
and it, it that that thought wants to get you to break tears and yeah. to see that emotion because you know what happens after that emotion gratitude 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 and putting in the perspective of what you're fighting for value what you have today because you might not have it tomorrow yeah. um but it's that mindset and changing those things um ed, ed my also recently said something too he's it was about restructuring on how he views time he goes no you're the crazy guy that's viewing uh, 24 hours in the day from some caveman that did it thousands of years ago. He goes, my I, I, my days are now in three days. From four to, to 10 or whatever it is, yeah. that's my day one. I work hard for those those X hours. From 11 to three, that's my day three. And from my four to my eight, that's my other day three. And he, he breaks it up in different ways. He goes, and now I have 50 some days in the week or month. Um, when you compound that over three years, I'm... 10 times in front of that other guy. Yes. But it's a perspective thing. Yeah. And one, if you're waking up that hour early, make sure that you are benefiting how you're perfecting your craft. Yeah. Don't wake up an hour early and start going like this, scrolling through your phone. Yeah. Right? That's the worst possible thing you could do. In fact, I don't open my emails until after I get to work. I need, to be, I need to be better at that because one, if you do have emails... You don't need to respond to them until 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. That's correct. And somebody at uh, Family Reunion did say that something about I, I, it was Family Reunion or somebody else. Um, I don't respond to my emails until noon because, again, they can wait. Yes. If it's something urgent, I'll be notified by my assistant or my right hand man. It is what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm OK to respond until noon. It's not life threatening. That's right. But really focusing on that time to building your craft, becoming an expert, focusing on your, your faith, your gratitude. Mm -hmm. Those things are going to bleed into the next t uh, six hours, 12 to six. Yeah. And how it changes your business. Well, Gary Keller says this all the time. And I also want to go back to gratitude for a second. But Gary Keller says you can get everything that you want to accomplish in your day done before noon as long as you're focused on doing the activities it, without distraction, not yeah. letting not letting your phone distract you, you know, not letting an email distract you. If, if you want to be productive and live a life beyond anything, you can do it all before noon. Mm -hmm. um, but it was Ed Milet that, that said what you just said about living basically three, three days in one, yeah. right? Or three lifetimes in a lifetime, right? Uh, and he's actually going to be at family reunion. Keynote. Really? Yeah, he's our. I, I did see that yeah. someone posted about Ed Milet being the uh, the keynote speaker. Yeah. What a great That's what a great so uh, person to, to listen to as well. Yeah. Um, but back to the gratitude. You said uh, a couple minutes ago. You know, at the end of the year last year of 2022, you were thinking about, man, I wish I would have just done one more. Not thinking about the 44 or whatever that you guys mm -hmm. did. I struggle with this all the time because, and, and people don't understand it. Hopefully someday they will get it. I'm never satisfied. I'm grateful though. I'm grateful for what has happened in my past, good, bad, or ugly. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for all of it, but I never am satisfied. And the reason that I struggle with that is because, you know, looking ahead in life, you know, knowing that there's places that I want to go and things that I want to do, um, Will I ever be satisfied? And it doesn't mean that I'm not joyful. It doesn't mean that I'm not happy. But at what point do I look down or up at everything that I've done in this world and say, Phew, I'm done. Done. Hard, I, hard day work. I'm satisfied. Yeah. Now I don't have to do anything else. I don't think that I'll ever get there. And I don't think I want to. Look at, look, how old's Gary Keller? 60, 67. So when he was born, what was the average life expectancy? Oh God. And I'm not trying to like yeah. think of something on a greater picture, yeah. but like, you know, he probably is beyond what life expectancy was when he was born. Sure. And he's just a good example that me and you both know. Yeah. Um, he's not satisfied. He's mm -hmm. always working towards something. And 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 it's the Ed Milets, it's the, the Gary V's, it's the Gary Kellers, it's the Grant Cardones, you know, uh, love him or hate him, yeah. listen or not. Those guys are experienced. It's probably a better word than saying old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> determined and hungry. It got m millions and millions of dollars. And the for billion. them, if you ask them their why, I bet you it wouldn't necessarily be about the money, but it would be about changing people's perspectives, 
uh, Grant Cardone might say the money. Um, that for him is more or less just a way of good keep of keeping score. But he's almost going to be seven. I think he's sixty eight. I think he's going to be seventy years old in the yeah. next two years. He looks great too. He looks great, and he's never satisfied. What does satisfaction bring, though? Comfort zone. Comfort zone brings content, mediocrity, man. content. Yeah, breeds scrolling, breeds right. the mind game, and. I guess the reality is is 90 9, maybe less than that. My my percentage is probably way off. 80% of the population is cool with that. Yeah. 20% is maybe not cool with that and then 5% is actually taking action on that. And that's the difference of maybe where you are today to where somebody is 10 years behind you in in the ladder at 27 or 28. And it doesn't take a lot to your mm -hmm. point. It's focusing on the things of, of why you're doing what you want to do and also having that goal in mind, but never being satisfied. So to, to add to that, and, you know, whoever listens to this. Probably 200 people. Cool. To all of you <laughs> 200 people. I wasn't born with this mindset. I wasn't born, you know, with being told I was great and that I could do anything and all of this stuff. Like. I don't know if you were born with, you know, with a positive mentality. Gary Keller, you know, name name anybody. This isn't something that you're necessarily born with. This is probably the hardest muscle that you ever have to work on. You know, diet and exercise is strenuous. Um, working on your mental state is even harder. Mm -hmm. I, th I would say that it's 10 times harder. The thing is, is that people don't understand is that um, and they say it in the Keller world. It's it's simple, just like what I'm saying. You want to read a couple of pages a day. You want to write down your goal. You want to take two minutes out of your life every single day to do something that builds your mindset. Or you can go spend an hour down in the gym and pumping iron and you know burning your muscles and sweating. Right. Mm -hmm. Building your mindset. It's simple, but it's not easy. Building your muscles is neither simple or easy right mm -hmm. it's strenuous yeah um so i just want people to understand that like i wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth and that was that's what made me believe that everything is anything is possible yeah when you scroll comments on social media at times i do you see a lot of those comments mm -hmm. it's easy you know, it's easy because your mom and dad. It's easy because, you know, these opportunities. And we don't need to get into, like, the personal backgrounds, but yeah. shit ain't easy for Dom. Yeah. Over the past 40 years, shit was not easy for Dom. No. And, but it was deciding to change your life. Yep. Doing these small 1% tasks that are going to get you closer to that goal, that finish line, still not being satisfied, compounding over five, seven years, change your life. Yeah. So whoever does see this, um, one... Truly, anything is possible. Would you agree with that? 100% I agree with that. And I know people hate hearing that. <laughs> well, I think people hate what they know is true. And it's more about hating it because it's a true statement and they're choosing not to accept that reality. So I hate it. Yeah. Yeah, I hate that's it. Painful. Um, you know, you're you're a bad person. Oh, no, you're wrong. I hate it. You know, it's I think again, people push back on the honest truth at times. Yeah. So again, but and it's it's whether you're overthinking it, fighting a uh, fighting back against what the truth is or what the potential can be, mm -hmm. um, and deciding not to take action. Yeah. And that's the difference. You hear it on bigger pockets all day long. What's the difference between winning and losing in real estate investing and the ones that do and the ones that don't? Ninety percent of the time it's someone saying action i think i've told you this before maybe it was when we were at family reunion um in in it, this goes back to i me believing that anything is possible mm -hmm. either i could build my life up to you know millions and billions of dollars or whatever it doesn't even matter the number and i could choose to share that you know trust with my family for generations to come if i ever got to, to that point that would be less valuable to those people, my great, great grandkids to have than if I was to say that when I die, I want my wife or my kids to package together the six books that impacted my life the most. And I want those six books packaged up a hundred times over again. And every person that's born in my family tree after me gets those six books 
to make that difference for themselves, to make that change for themselves. Mm -hmm. Because I know that if they read those six books, that they will create a life that's beyond their wildest dreams, Yeah, which would be better than me giving money. Yeah. Uh, uh, what Don was just talking about is teach a man to fish, feed him forever, give a man a fish, he dies or he starves tomorrow. He eats for a day. Yeah. Um, eats for a day. Yeah. I was close. Yeah. Um, and I think that a lot of these wealthy elitist billionaires um, might have a very similar mentality, not giving their kids a lot of things. And I think about this quote as well. Make your kids, don't make your kids life hard by making their childhood too easy mm. and not putting them through adversity and, and, and struggle and pain. And it's, you don't need to make your kids starve, but at the end of the day, how old are your sons? Nah, I got 22, 9, and 6. The 9 and the 6-year-old, 22-year-old, I'm sure he's still facing the 22-year-old adversity, but the 9 and 6-year-old are very moldable at this point in time. Mm -hmm. They listen, they understand, they can comprehend. Yes. And I don't know, but I'm sure you're putting them through small amounts of adversity. Absolutely. Because, one, you don't want them to just expect, Dad, I need this. Dad, I need this. Back mm -hmm. to exactly that quote. You're teaching them how to fish. Yeah. And they're going to be able to feed their families, 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 families. And that's worth more than the $10 million that you might leave to a generation. But could that build that $10 million with the same mentality that you're focusing in on? Does that $10 million go to $100 million? Very, the answer is yes. Good, yes. And then there's some other quote that's like, uh, "I walked, I walked to work so my son could drive a Ford. My my son, my son drove a Ford so my uh, grandson could drive a Cadillac. Cadillac to a Ferrari. The next generation is still is back to walking. That's right. So where do you feel like you kind of uh, fit on that? I I probably think you're walking to work. I I think I'll always be. Yeah. Right. In a good way. Yeah. And so your gener so your your sons can can drive that Ford. Um, but what we're trying to do, or at least from what I'm hearing, is you're trying to make sure that everyone's thinking about walking. Yeah. We're all walking. If, if if we eventually have a product where we can buy Ferraris at that point in time, great. It's sure. a buy, it's a great byproduct of it. But changing people's perspective and getting the way they think, build, grow their life, whether it's family, business, faith, so on and so forth, walk to work. Walk yeah. the journey, love the journey. Yeah. Um, anything you want to build off that before we go into the six books? Um you agree with all of it? I 100% agree with it. Yeah. I and, and I love that you even went as far as, you know, raising, you know, how we raise our kids, not making their life so easy, so it's hard down the road. Yeah. Uh, early in my career in real estate, one of my agents came to me and she said, "Hey, Dominic, I know that you've, you know, had some struggle in your life and, you know, you made it here. Um, I have some kids that are struggling. How do I help them?" You know, how, how do I help them grow into the type of person that you've grown into? What'd you say? My answer was let them fall on their face. Yeah. And that's not, that doesn't mean, you know, let, let them go land in the streets, right? And be homeless and do the bad things. But I wouldn't be where I'm at without the struggle that I was able to, to go through. And I, I believe that that was all a blessing. As a parent, I take that advice myself. Um, I'm not going to catch my kids every time that they fall and so they don't scratch their knee. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to I'm going to be there. I'm always going to be there and I'm going to I'm going to tell them to get up and you know walk it off just like I did and and they're going to walk it off. And and I heard this quote the other day or this analogy. And it sounds tough, but how does uh, how do you strengthen iron right you put it into a fire you pull it out you beat on it you stick it back in the fire you pull it back out and you beat on it and it gets stronger and it gets sharper every single time right and you quench it right all of those things we we are the same way and i'm not i'm not throwing my kids into a fire and beating on them but I tell you what, I mean, they could live a really easy life and I'm intentionally trying to help them face their fears, uh, face their own adversity, to overcome things on their own and, you know, not just cry and, and wait for us to lift them up. Because mm -hmm. um, I think that it's important 
to yeah. who they become down the road. <clears throat> and it's not about the it's not about the fire. It's about small faces facing adversity in small doses to where that's still a little fire. It's yeah. still a little fire. Yeah. It's not a lot of fire. Right. But they don't necessarily need to go all of the fire because dad went through all the fire. So maybe learn from my experiences as well. So it's a little combination of both. And I think uh, I'm not a parent. And that's my disclaimer anytime I talk about parenting things, but I'm also not a pilot and I can tell that flying a plane is not the easiest thing in the world. And yeah. I know that being a parent is not easy, but my perspective on parenting is people are so worried about all these different things. He's got to have, you know, you know, be the baseball player, good sports. I'm worried about a few things, confidence, self-esteem, ability to make a decision, period. Mm -hmm. And I think too many parents are one not installing their kids and building them up to be confident and great self-esteem individuals, and they're making decisions for them. If you're gone tomorrow, you and mom are gone tomorrow, those kids have to make decisions. And the only other thing I would add to that is be kind. Be kind. Like, be kind. That's so I, important. I, we grew up in the church, and I always tried, at least uh, the, the thing that I appreciate, my takeaway from Christianity is fruits of the Spirit. Love, I'm going to butcher them, but the fruits of the spirit, mm -hmm. obviously another pivotal point of, uh, of that kindness. Um, yeah, no, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And I think too many people to your kindness point, too many people say, ah, no, I don't have an influence on Dom. I don't have an influence on these people around me. Yeah, you do. And you have the ability to be kind yeah, or be hard. What does hard do for our society besides build resentment in that individual versus kindness and i it maybe it's just a foundational piece of me but you know i am very kind to every single person i come into contact with and when you see that genuine connection that shit matters oh. to them it matters to me it might not might be nothing um it just might be something that i'm doing but to them it kind of sees that it changes the world and, and i always think about this quote that's um uh they'll never remember how you made uh, what what you uh they'll never remember what you said they'll always remember how you made them feel that's great and i can only speak from my experience but mm -hmm. anytime i'm around you i walk away feeling good and that shows that so installing that into kids is massive yeah um let's go back to the ability to make decisions though too is or or um a lot of parents will pick up kids fast right away i think that's a short-term focus but creating a long-term problem. Mm -hmm. And again, that's a stupid example, but there's there's certain things that I witness when parents are doing certain things that I'm like, well, like I get what you're doing right now. I, I know you're trying to solve this problem right here, but is that creating a different issue? So thinking big picture, and this relates to every, everything we're talking about, mm -hmm. be focused in the moment, have that focus, have that gratitude, but also realize where we're working towards. And if, if that, if that, if what I'm doing today is affecting my ability and my trajectory, I need to be able to course correct on that stuff. Most people don't have a trajectory. Why is that? Is it lack of, is it, is it desire? Is it focus? Why do people not have that trajectory? I, that, that's one of the world's mysteries to yeah. me, man. It's probably a billion I dollar mean, question. It, it probably is because, you know, Again, I could take a hundred people and you, put them in this room and say, "What's your What's your goal for your life in five years?" How many are going to be able to give me an answer to that? They no. don't have a trajectory. They don't know. They're going to be able to regurgitate something they've heard. Chance financial are. freedom and you know right. purpose and education. Um, correct me. I mean, this is where my mind goes to. Do you think they're not foundation in their why enough? Absolutely. You, you, you know your why. Yeah. You know your purpose. You know your You know your trajectory. So. I think my my perspective when I see a lot of these you know real estate investors, real estate agents, any freaking anybody, young people in my life, and young people being twenty one to thirty two, sure, um, I don't think they've really foundation themselves in why they're doing what they want to do. They're being told to do what's always been done. Yeah, and I'll I'll relate it back to an example of this young girl. She's twenty two, just graduated college. A friend of a friend, kind of cousins without being cousins. Um, She's very influenced by others. That's not a bad thing. Sure. But it's more or less, and you you probably know people like this. Uh, they, they like to take tallies. Hey, Dom, what should I do, A, B, or C? Oh, you should do A. Oh, okay, Susan, what should I do, A, B, or C? Yeah. B? Okay, cool. So they're waiting to see who gets the most tallies. And that's not bad, I guess, but that doesn't help you personally. You just kind of found out what other people's decisions are. Um, and then the other thing is, I think people are full of I think that you really need to protect your mind when it comes to the advice that you're getting from others. 
And yeah. maybe it's as easy as having a conversation with somebody, like a real conversation with somebody, not a back and forth crap, but having a conversation with a Dom Comer, an Aaron Williams, a Bill Maniachi, or whoever else to figure out what their why is, what their trajectory is, mm -hmm. and maybe not mold your life just like them, but realize that that advice is actually going to impact where you wanna be. And I'll give you one more example, then I'll let you go. Um, I was taking advice from three buddies in college on a relationship, mm -hmm. and one guy was cheating on his girlfriend with a bunch of women. Uh, one never even kissed a girl, and the other one was never been in a relationship. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing right now? Why am I not getting advice from somebody who's been married for 30, 40 years? Yeah. So do you think that that's, and maybe not necessarily in your brokerage, but maybe in our community, do you think that, do you think that would provide more value for, for certain people? Be careful who you're taking advice from. You know, it's really funny. I'm glad that you said this. This morning, directly before coming here, I had a breakfast with my son's boxing coach. Mm. That's, he's over there at Scorpion. So don't mess with your son. Continue. Right. <laughs> um, and this this young man he's 25 years old the coach the coach okay uh i wanted to get to know his story where he came from you know he's doing great things with these kids and i know that he has you know he's come from a, a, a hard place so i wanted to kind of mentor him a little bit and one of the things that we talked about was who you're taking advice from who you're surrounding yourself with and one of his big takeaways from this was you know obviously um not obviously even along his journey in life he's given up on you know having goals and what he called being naive because he you know he, he had these big dreams and had these big goals but everybody in his world in his life was telling him that, that was never going to happen that's not for you and i said you gotta you gotta look at who you're taking advice from are they where you want to be mm-hmm Right. And that's in all things. So it could be the boxing coach. It could be the school teacher. It could be the janitor. It could be the realtor. It could be the, you know, the trust fund kid. I don't care who it is. Be careful who you're taking advice from. If we want to go real estate specific, you go on YouTube. You can get coached by any real estate agent out there that wants to go on YouTube and try to give you the best advice. They might sell they might sell $10 million in real estate or they might sell one, right? Now, who are you taking your advice from? Yeah. If my mom said, Dominic, you can never be a millionaire, but my mom has never been a millionaire, who am, what, am I, what am I listening to her for? To be honest with you, and it's not saying don't go listen to your parents, but don't you don't have to take advice from people who aren't where you want to go. Learn the right lessons from the right people. Period. Mom's got something to teach you. Dad had something to teach you, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and learn, listen to your parents, but also too take it as a grain of salt. And that's what I kind of like to say with all these influencers or all these individuals or people in, yeah. in our life is. I love the story. I love what you have to say, but maybe I'm not replicating my life 50% 50, 50 or hundred percent to what Dom's doing. Sure. But if I'm able to take 2% or even just 1% and bring it to my life, what's that value compounded over time? Realize who's giving you advice. Yeah. And two, it, I don't think it takes a lot to realize that it's the right or wrong person to give you advice. Accolades mm -hmm. have an impact on that. Sure. So I'm probably not going to talk to a real estate agent at a real estate agent that's never had a market center. Yeah. That's just easy, applicable advice. Sure, sure. But then it all roots back to your why. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? So the advice that I'm taking right now is more or less large real estate investors. Yeah. Who's got Who's got a thousand doors? Um, I'm thinking of it. I want to say it because people always say it. You are the five closest people to you. You believe in that? Oh, I said that. Who, I said that this morning. Who are your five people? Uh, well, you don't have to share them if you don't want to. Yeah, no, I I talk about this often. When I first heard that you are the sum total of the five people that you spend the most time with, I didn't have anybody physically in my life that I really looked up to at that level. Yeah. Um, so it all started with me plugging into YouTube and saying, you know, um, Grant Cardone, right? I want to listen to Grant Cardone's wisdom. I want to surround myself with Grant Cardone because the guy's a billionaire. Yeah. Uh, it was Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is a, now a billionaire with over 100 companies. I want to listen to Tony Robbins' best wisdom. So when I'm driving, every time I'm driving, and this has been going on for years now, I'm listening to you know, Tony Robbins. I'm listening to Grant. I'm listening to Jim Rohn. I'm listening to 
Les Brown. I'm listening to um, Jeff Bezos, right? I'm listening to Gary Vee. I'm listening to Gary Keller. These are the people that I'm surrounding myself with, even though I don't know them personally. I love that. Right? I didn't know five millionaires that I could go sit with back then that that could help me grow, Mm -hmm. but I did. I got to listen for years and years and years to these millionaires and billionaires sitting in my passenger seat. I, I do that without doing that, but I love that you said that because I always go to a physical human being. And when I think about it, I go, wow, I'm doing the exact same things. And this isn't necessarily, well, one, I wanted to, I wanted to pl- pl- uh, play this. This is an Ed Milet. And mm-hmm. we were just talking about this. Of, uh, And I don't know if it's this video or this video. They're the same video. They're different clips. Yep. And it's about, don't listen to naysayers. They're going to kill their dream killers. Yeah, this is it. I'm gonna restart it. Don't listen to people that are gonna tell you that you can't do it. Don't listen to haters, don't listen to naysayers, don't listen to people that give you advice that tell you to slow down or you shouldn't do it or you can't do it or the time's not right or any of those other things. Those are dream stealers. They were sent to you to see if you'll overcome them. They were sent to you to test your resiliency. And if you can overcome that, if you just discard all of that stuff and you get clear on those other things, you've got a really good chance of doing something great with your life. And just remember what you were put here to do. You're not a mistake. You're not here by an accident. You were born to do something great with your life. You were born to make a difference with your life. This is a fact. I think that changes people's life. I think Ed Milet will change people's lives, will change 1% of the people's lives at Family Reunion. Oh my God. Those people that listen to what he has to say, apply it to their lives. And I kind of get in chills just I thinking just about got, seeing. I actually got the chills. That changes people's lives. Yeah. And because how many people in all aspects of life hear the naysayers, hear the you can't do it, hear the why would you want to do those things and decide to just to to destroy those dreams they're like you just said they're dream killers and one thing one thing to add to that and this is this comes up in coaching sessions all the time is you can be on this journey and and you can block out everybody's voices around you that's that's very strong you have to be very strong to do that Mm -hmm. the next step though is all of the wrenches that will get tossed in your path to try to make you trip along the way to success And John Maxwell said this at at Family Reunion a couple years ago. He said, everything worthwhile is uphill. Everything worthwhile is uphill. So it's going to be a harder path, right? To get the things that are worthwhile. If you're you're strolling, you know, walking down a hill and it turns you into a jog naturally, I mean, it honestly is not helping you get anywhere, Mm -hmm. anywhere good. Everything worthwhile is uphill. There are going to be things that come into your way. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be cliffs, you know, that you're going to fall off of along the way. Yeah. Overcoming that. It, will change your life. Will change your life. It's, pressure Pressure creates diamonds. You right. know, friction is a part of life. Go to what is uncomfortable. You do something uncomfortable every single day, it will change your life. And obviously, it's got to be the right things that make you uncomfortable. But that... Out that out of your comfort zone is the difference of changing your situation. And one thing that I want to say, don't know if it's applicable, to do to go where we haven't gone before, we need to do what we haven't done. Where people continuously try to do what they're wanting to do with a goal that'll never happen because they're not willing to do what needs to be done or yeah. walk to the uphill. Yeah. They just want to keep walking up, but I like this downhill shit. Yeah, yeah. And I don't necessarily want to stop running down. Like, I'm cool with it. What? We got to walk up that hill right now? Yeah. Say the quote again. John Maxwell. Everything worthwhile in life is uphill. Um, We've been talking for about 50 minutes now, so we'll we'll try to start closing. All right. <laughs> Me and you yeah. could talk for freaking days, man. And honestly, um... Um, don't tell anybody this, but, and I could talk to every single person that's been on the podcast before, but you make me want to say every Tuesday, 10 AM, 6 AM, let's, let's jump on the podcast. Just talk about whatever, who the hell knows what it is. Yeah. Um, that's how, how much fun I'm having. Anytime. Right now. And Anytime. honestly, we didn't know where this was. This was not scripted. No. This was nothing. I kind of wanted to talk about in my mind, I go in with a little bit of a plan and maybe um, you know, where Dom started today, what Dom was doing in the 20s uh, to, you know, uh, early 30s, 32, getting a real estate license, owning a market center, so on and so forth. In a way, we've definitely touched on all of that because everything yeah. that we're talking about is Dom at 28 to 32 Different stages. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's 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 focus in on and give give some good takeaways. 
Mm -hmm. What are those six books that you're giving to your, your generations, generations, generations? Yeah. So back, back to that story. Like, I, I, I don't know if we, if we caught it on here or not. The most value that I feel like I can pass along to change my family tree for generations after me versus giving, which I, I really hope that I'm at a place that I can pass along money, right? Of course. But I think that more valuably, if I passed along six books that had been influential in changing my life, that I could give to every one of my great grandchildren. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter career path. Doesn't matter It'll career path. Life. For the next, if I package six, a hundred packs of six books up, what would I put? For the, give them the opportunity that I had, and and hopefully more than one percent takes that opportunity and reads these six books. Mm -hmm. Number one, first and foremost, is the Bible. The Bible is more than just about faith in in war in and history and love and, and wicked and, and right and great you know phenomenal things like the reason that I read the book of Proverbs every single day is because it is pure wisdom in life and I think that you can take that anywhere somebody who says that they don't read if they just read that they their life will change mm -hmm. another one is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill that really helped me change my mindset and understand that the word impossible just doesn't even exist. It should be <clears throat> ripped out of the dictionary. It does not exist. I think people buy that book too, thinking that they're going to get the recipe for success to be rich. But I think the the first few lines is, is the more important one. Think yeah. and grow rich. Yes. And it's not a, it's not a complicated book. No. It's a very, very basic book, but it's all about... Thinking. mindset yes third book third book would be outwitting the devil and it's not a religious book it's not even a spiritual book um, the one great thing that I like about this book is it helps you grasp the difference between heaven and hell in life um, it's a very deep book the coolest thing about this book is that it was written also by Napoleon Hill back in the 30s Napoleon Hill never published the book out of be fear out of fear yeah. for his family right or or his own life at the time because people could not wrap their heads around it back then yeah and the book was not published until 2011 by the napoleon hill foundation and i'm assuming napoleon is uh now passed oh yeah he, he was passed in the, he I wrote believe, these in the 30s wrote them in the 30s i think he passed in the 60s or 70s even his wife wouldn't publish the book until she passed away. His daughter died in 1986. She wouldn't publish the book because they still didn't believe that the world would understand ready. it yeah. or that they were ready for it. Yeah. Isn't so, that crazy to think about? And just to, um, this man is writing these books in the 30s. One, they're relevant today. They'll always be relevant. Yeah. Somebody today can take it, t have a great takeaway from even somebody in the 30s. Yes. Um, that's crazy to me. And that's a man or an individual way before their time, a generational individual that's going to impact people mm -hmm. for time and time and time and time again. So, mm -hmm. fourth book? Unleash the Power Within. Unleash the Power From Within. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. It is a massive book. I think it's 600 pages. <laughs> and I... How do you read books? Do you read books? Because there's a few people that skim books. There's a few people that... I read every audiobook, word. Every word, slow and steady. Yeah. 20 pages a day. Typically 10 pages a day is my okay. goal. Um, so what would that take you, I guess, if we're bringing down some numbers? 600-page 600 pa 600 book, 20 pages a day, 10 pages a day. How long is that taking you? You taking a few weeks on that? Oh, God. That book took me probably six months. How many books do you read a year or try to? Do you have, have any type of goal? I try to read one book every two months, which... That was that was three books though. So yeah. right. <laughs> so you definitely hit that goal of you're reading at least a, a book every two months. Mm -hmm. And the reason I ask is because well, one, I'm I quickly skim through certain things and try to pick out these top points. And actually, the first thing that I'll do, uh, like it or don't, mm -hmm. um, I will always do a, a book summary first. And if I'm able to take away something from a book summary, like you know Alex Hermosi's Million Dollar Offer, yeah, and try to apply that to my life versus you know, reading those 20 pages a day. That's how I kind of try to sure. do those things. Um, Cause, and again, I think that, and I don't know if I've said this, but people are going to read that unleash uh, within Tony Robbins, 600 pages and go, I need to implement everything. <laughs> 
What are your thoughts on a book? Obviously, you want to maximize that book's potential. I'm sure you go back to it. I'm sure you have notes. I'm sure you kind of reference it in, in times. But I think that too many people are focused on family reunion, Tom Ferry elite retreats, and they want to implement 20 things. Yeah. Implement one thing from that book. Yeah. So that book specifically, what's that one thing that you've implemented into your life? Uh, uh, implemented, I mean, just the mentality of mm -hmm. of all. Anything is possible. Yeah. I mean, that that's come from the Bible. That's come from this Tony Robbins book. It's come from Think and Grow Rich. It, I, I think that that keeps the limits off of my life. Yeah. And it keeps me striving and, and, and pushing through the hard things. And and, and limiting, limiting beliefs can be positive or negative. And to your point, nothing's, what would you say? Nothing's impossible. Nothing is impossible. Um, positively or negatively. Yeah. And just... I, I joke with my wife, she loves step 10, and I'll, I'll talk you through that. When I say we need to do this, and I'm more the visionary, she's the integrator, Pat's the technician, just the workhorse. Yeah. Um, I say, hey, this is what we need to do, and she's thinking about step 10. I go, time out, we just need to think about step one. What's step one? And then and then get to step two, and then step three. Yeah. It's where people get overwhelmed with, I wanna buy 100 doors. No, no. I just buy one door. Yeah. One door, and 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 I'm kind of. I just showed a house last night to a potential new investor, and they're so worried about what I've done, or what other people are doing, and how they need to do it today. What deal should I buy? The deal that gets you in to investing in real estate, and two gets you motivated to buy more, because mm -hmm. that deal can be the difference of not wanting to do it and wanting to do it. Mm. Um, Gosh, book yeah. number five. I'm going to either go one of the five or six is going to be The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. It explains how money works. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, I'm going to do these in this order because I do believe it starts with getting your mind right. Yeah. And book six is going to be The Millionaire Next Door. Four, four, four books to get your mind right. Yeah. Book five to understand whatever we're doing, how money's going to work for you. Implementing, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then, the and then six, six was what? The millionaire next door. The millionaire next door. I've never read it. I understand the concept, more or less. Uh, and and give us a brief concept of millionaire next door. People think that. Uh, you, well, one perception is everything on somebody's life that they are wealthy or they're not wealthy. Mm -hmm. But your average person that's doing these great things compounded over time is the millionaire next door. Am I right yes. on that or kind of tracking on you're, that? Yes, you're exactly right. Yeah. And realizing that, well, and, and me and me and my wife actually just did a crazy thing. Uh, we, I don't know if you knew this, we sold our house. We were going to move into Glenwith at Fix and Flip. Oh, yeah. You didn't? Uh, no, we did not. We sold it to a, we made 20 grand in, in two months. Obviously, we'll do capital gains, no big deal. I, yeah. I Took a step back and I thought, do we want to hold a single family home as a rental property? The answer was was no. You know, this year I want to buy, I want to double our units in one deal. So technically that'd be an eight unit complex. Yep. I'm cool with buying buying anything from a six to a thirty two, depending on you know opportunity. Um, but I wanted to put that money into resources that are actually going to build that rental portfolio that we want to hold for a long, long time. So we actually moved into an apartment. Oh. One bed, one bath. Carissa Collins lives across the street, really, oh, yeah. in that the crossings. Yeah, yeah. And uh, really, the perspective is this is, one, we're saving a shit ton of money. We're saving about 1000 bucks a month. Uh, the house we were in, we were probably utilizing maybe 40% of it. I just see that as wasted space. Yeah. Um, I wanted to give that to somebody that, one, wanted that home, or two, is actually going to maximize in using that space. Um, and irrelevant maybe not irrelevant we weren't even living at the house before it closed our electricity bill not even living there was 80 bucks <laughs> our first month of living at the apartment eight dollars oh my god and my my um uh, private money lender investor partner he goes hey you gotta buy this house it's uh down the street from me it's awesome blah 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 i go well <clears throat> you know wise man once told me don't waste time and money on liabilities put all that money into cash flow and assets to pay you in your sleep. And he goes, who told you that? I go, you, <laughs> he goes, ah, he goes, you can't listen to everything I say. Um, oh, wow. I want to circle back on that one thing. And this was a Tom Ferry thing. He goes, and, and, and I, I agree five, six people, the people in your life have an impact, whether it's five, whether mm -hmm. it's 50. Yeah. Tom's like, nah, Tom Ferry. Yeah. He's like, nope. He goes, you find, you go home, you find two people in different sectors of your life that are going to build your business. And maybe one's a millionaire real estate investor and the other one's a team lead of an eight, eight person team, whatever it is, surround them in your life 
they will change your life. It doesn't necessarily need to be that five. And as we've talked about, they don't even need to be physically in your life. Correct. They can change your life. And I even pulled out that video just for reference. The only camera running still is that middle one. Um, um, these are saved videos. So <laughs> this one we talked about early, early on. Oh. So it's about habits and rituals. Um, yeah. in, in, in time, in tough times, you are always going to uh, resort back to your, your habits and rituals. So make sure that you have habits and rituals that benefit your life. So I've mm. been doing what you're doing without even thinking about it, listening to Ed Milet every single day. This one is uh, Jordan. Um, Jordan Peterson? Yeah. And it was more or less be a monster and then control that monster. Yeah. One of the things I tell young men, well, and young women as well, but the young men really need to hear this more, I think, is that you should be a monster. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. Be kind. You yeah. Yep. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat and all of that. It's like, no. Wrong. You be a be a monster and then control it. And yeah. I don't know if you relate with that or not, oh, but, I I, but I'm sure you're a very competitive individual. And it, it's bringing all of these things to a full circle of, of building that trajectory. Um, anything yeah. you want to build off of that? We've talked a lot about a lot of shit. We've talked about yeah. habits, rituals, how they serve your purpose. We talked about, you know, breaking it down to 1% every single day. And what Dom said originally, um, the next 90 days, write down that one goal. Write yeah. down that one goal. That that will change your life and stay committed to it. It's not about that one goal. What is it about? Getting into the mindset of progressing to something better. In the habit. In the habit. Right? Yeah. Because if you do it for 90 days, on the 91st day, if you don't do it, you're going to feel like shit. Mm -hmm. Right? Just like if you get into a, a habit of working out and then you don't. Right? You start to miss it at that point. Yeah. These are just habits. 75 hard is not about 75 hard. No. Have you ever done 75 hard? I do a, a form of 75 hard every day for the last couple of years. Yeah, you're you're a 75 hard through and through without, and that's what I would say as well. Um, 75 hard is not about you know getting shredded in 75 days. No, and it's stopping. It's all about it's all about working your mind to doing things that you haven't done or doing things that you don't want to do, but it means you are going to get somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, I only recapped a few things, six books, go back and rewind those. Maybe we'll uh, link them in the description. That's what Dom's giving to his, uh, his kids, 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 kids to change their life. Um, what a great talk and a yeah. great change up to a real estate thing. And the cool part about, I think what we talked about today is anyone can listen to this and anyone can change their life on it. Dom That's Comer, um, OP market center here at KW living. I don't know if anyone's ever going to reach out. Maybe you do want to reach out. You're not big on social media, are you? Nah, barely. Just family stuff. Usually. If someone wants to reach you, you know, what is it? Just yeah. Dom at KW.com? Uh, it's Dominic, D-O-M-I-N-I-C-K at KW.com. Or shoot me a text, shoot us a DM. Yeah. Uh, we'll get you in touch with Dom, KW Living. Um, great local brokerage, benefiting the whole community. And that's my perspective. I at least see that. Um, and we've talked a little about this, but we'll cap it out on, on this one. Is My perspective is... You give a, you give a lot of shits in nothing but a good way. You, you give you give a shit about every single person that walks through your door, whether it's at real, well, from a real estate one brokerage, from a Cowell banker. You're trying to serve, not sell, and provide value to every single person that comes into your life. Whether that person decides to take action is the only other question. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that serves your purpose, building those people up around you, putting them in the fire and beating them until they get stronger and stronger and stronger. Cause that's gonna build a thriving Keller Williams, Livingston County. It, it'll build a better world, man. I mean, yeah. if I can help you and you go and take something that I took, you know, that I said here and you go help somebody else and it changes their life. I mean, this will compound. Yeah. So. Close, close it out. Anything that, if you had to put it into two cents, close it out, give it to them straight. What's Dom's takeaway? Final thoughts. Be kind. Keep growing. Keep learning. Don't ever stop. I mean, keep sharing value with everybody around you as much as you possibly can. Yeah. And your life will, you, you will end up rich in life. People are worried about revealing all their secrets and giving things away. Pat and myself, someone calls us, it's about helping them 
come to the right solution, their solution. And we're not worried about the samurai master revealing all of their secrets. We're yeah. not worried about that stuff because I think at the end of the day, there's something bigger out there when it comes to a successful or a business at a certain level. And just because we help bring people up is not going to mean it's going to diminish our business. Never. So, dude, yeah. absolutely a pleasure. Um, you know, as always, Chris Lotz, uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Beyond the Keys, the Palettes Podcast, and we'll see you in the uh, next one. You awesome. demand. Yeah, thank Hell you. Yeah, Thanks for watching. Make sure to use those like, comment, and share buttons below. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Pat Lots Real Estate for more helpful home buying and selling tips. Want a free comparable market analysis? Scan that QR code on your screen or visit our website at www.patlots.com and fill out the request form. There's lots to love in Livingston County.